Hello, future AES assessors. Welcome to the AES program overview. I'll be your guide as we introduce you to the AES mission, assessor roles, and explain how you can become qualified to perform CISA cyber assessments according to CISA standards and methodologies. Let's get started. I'll explain the AES program, assessor roles, and the program's training and qualification processes. First, let's look at the AES program. The mission of AES is to train a workforce of prepared and qualified assessors who understand CISA's cybersecurity assessment methodologies and the sequential steps required to conduct a specific CISA assessment. AES achieves its mission by translating CISA's cybersecurity assessment requirements into a student training regimen in each AES course. The AES process fosters consistent knowledge, skills, and tasks throughout national cybersecurity assessor communities, improving the ability to offer assessment findings in a consistent and repeatable manner. The AES program offers free training to all stakeholder communities throughout critical infrastructures, including federal, state, local, tribal, territorial, and public and private contractors and vendors. This approach cultivates a national cybersecurity community standard of consistency and repeatability and improves the contribution of assessors to national data collection efforts. Now that we've reviewed the AES mission and program focus, let's look briefly at the four AES assessment roles and the knowledge, skills, and tasks that each requires. How do we know what they are? We mapped each assessor role to the workforce framework for cybersecurity called the NICE framework, which gives us a deep understanding of the required knowledge, skills, and tasks needed. Learn more about the NICE framework at this link. The assessment lead, or AL role, serves as primary assessment team POC and leads the assessment team. The AL manages the overall assessment execution and debriefs and delivers the assessment report. The technical lead, or TL role, is responsible for overall assessment execution and leads the technical exchange meeting, or TIM. The TL also writes most of the assessment report and supports meetings throughout the assessment. The operator, or OP role, leads the penetration test and is responsible for the testing results appendix of the assessment report. The OP contributes to other portions of the report and supports all technical discussions throughout the assessment. For acceptance to an AES course as an OP candidate, an applicant must pass an additional pre-course exam, the Operator Skills Test, or OST. To apply for the Sector Specific Subject Matter Expert, or SSME role, a candidate must have a minimum of five years operational technology or OT experience in security operational technology in a specific sector, for example, in oil and gas, electric, water, chemical, or manufacturing industries in an operations environment. Now let's look at the AES prerequisites that all applicants need to complete to be a good candidate for any assessor role. These are the minimum skills needed. Although ES doesn't require applicants to have any certifications, if you do have one or more of these, you have a preferred profile for an assessor role. Because of its unique tasks, the operator role requires additional skills.
Next, let's review the training process. The AES training process consists of seven steps divided into two areas, prerequisites and courses. Let's take a deeper dive into each step. The AES overview is the first prerequisite. AES requires all applicants to review the AES program overview as their orientation to the program. Visit the AES webpage or the CISA YouTube channel to view the program overview. The next step is course registration. After you view the AES program overview video, visit the AES webpage for course registration instructions. Step three is candidate evaluation. To confirm that you have a baseline cybersecurity knowledge to be successful in an AES course, you must complete and pass the candidate evaluation or CE exam. You have several attempts to pass the multiple choice question test with a score of 70% or higher. The CE is a mandatory step and is applicable to every AES assessor role. Before taking the CE exam, you must read and acknowledge the AES Code of Ethics and Compliance. After you pass the CE, your results are valid for six months. For operators, there's another step. If you want to become an AES operator before you take the CE exam, you must pass the Operator Skills Test or OST exam, which evaluates your penetration testing skills. The OST is mandatory for all AES operators. Let's take a look at the required courses. Now that you've passed your CE exam and OST for operator candidates, it's class time. Visit the AES webpage for detailed course and registration information. Here's a quick update on one of our courses. AES is anticipating the release of the AES HVA 3.0 e-learning course in early 2025. All AES students who have been deemed qualified in AES HVA 2.0 assessment methodology will have access to the following. AES HVA 3.0 microlearning video. This video describes the differences between HVA 2.0 and HVA 3.0. AES HVA 3.0 question set and other AES HVA 3.0 documentation. AES HVA 3.0 e-learning course. This is offered to all students who feel they need a refresher and choose to take the new e-learning course. Practical exchange meetings or PEMs will be scheduled to discuss any of your questions. Step five is the capstone exam. After you complete your AES course, you're now ready for the capstone or final exam. The AES capstone exam is a multiple choice, machine scoreable test that covers all aspects of a specific assessment. Next up is course completion. After you complete the AS capstone exam, you will receive an email with good news. You passed or not so good news. You did not pass. When you complete the course and pass, you receive a certificate of qualification with prerequisites and courses complete. Now let's review the AS qualification process. The final step is the certificate of qualification. Congratulations! You passed your AES capstone exam and received your certificate of qualification. The certificate means that you're qualified as an AES assessor in your training course role. Thank you for your interest in the CISA AES training program. We hope you now have a better understanding on how to participate in AES training, how to become qualified as an AES assessor, and the different assessment roles. For more information, email aestraining at hq.dhs.gov or visit cisa.gov aes. Thanks again for your time and attention.